Hello and welcome everyone to another StarCraft 2 England cast. Today I have got a awesome game between Liquid Xenio and Incredible Miracles Seed. Um, Seed is the red Protoss player in the top right. Xenio is the blue Zerg in the bottom left. The map is Cloud Kingdom. And this replay is from Xenio's Razor Replay Pack of the Week, which is on Team Liquid Pro every Thursday and is sweet. So check that out, guys. It really is. It's epic. Um, anyway, what is this map going to have in store for us? Well, obviously being Cloud Kingdom, we're probably going to see a fast expansion because this is actually quite a narrow choke point, quite easy for the Protoss player to hold, um, as I thought there goes the pylon. Meanwhile, um, well, Xenio, he will probably get a pool first build, purely because against Protoss you've got to be worried about cannons. Um, no one likes cannons in your natural, it's awful. I cast the Antec attack tournament on the 25th, which was yesterday at the time I'm casting this, and there was a player in there who literally just cannon rushed. And when that didn't work, he cannon rushed some more. So it was quite amusing the first game, but after that, it got a bit dull. Anyway, um, we will see that Seed is scouting. Um, obviously, scouting is good because that means you can react to what your opponent's doing. You're going to see no super early pool, so you can sigh a big sigh of relief. The pool going down for Xenio at 14. Um, 14, 15 timing for the pool. It's a bit more of a matter of personal preference. It's slightly, slightly safer going the 14 route and slightly more economical going the 15 route but again it's so fractional that it doesn't matter hugely um, anyway we will see here that Seed he's just bringing this probe down getting a forge so not doing any kind of crazy shenanigans such as a nexus first build which he can get away with but again it's just a bit more risky and why play risky when you can just play safe and react appropriately and still win? Um, yeah, what is C doing? Well, again, he's just got that nexus up. It's fairly normal timing from both players here. He's just being very diligent with this probe, making sure he knows exactly what's going on around Xenio's base. And, well, he's going to see that there are drones. Indeed, there are. There's four Zerglings on the way as well as a Queen. And he's just going to really finish off this wall off. He's getting a cannon. He's so safe right now. There is pretty much nothing Xenio can throw at him that would cause a problem. But that probe, is he's going to die most probably, unless he's really, really lucky. Um, the hatchet goes down for Xenio. Again, super standard timing. What will be interesting is when he takes this third, because your ideal time is 4 minutes 20 to 4 minutes 30. That's when you want this third down. You can get it earlier, but super risky. Um, you can get it later, but game bad economically. Alternatively, he could do some kind of crazy two base play. The probe did survive. Yay for probe. Yay. Anyway, um, we will see that that probe is going to go back to mining. He's like, I did my job. I literally walked in the path of death and I'm back home now. I want a quiet life of being a miner. Um, gone are the days of the kind of early days of mining where mining was a risky job. In, in the future, clearly it's it's all good mining. You just you pick up some minerals which are conveniently on the surface and you just carry them. It's it's not a hard job, but it's a very rewarding one and one essential to the StarCraft community. Anyway, we will see here that a cyber core coming down on the high ground. So he wants to make sure that cyber core stays alive. And there's the third base out for Xenio. That was out at roughly five minute mark, which again fractionally late. Um but it's not a huge deal. His natural was delayed as well. Um it's you're counting like you're really being nitpicky if anywhere around sort of before five minutes is a good time for the third base to be fair four minutes 20 is just the real top-notch perfect time um, but again if there was pressure coming in from the protest player that would screw you up really really bad anyway we will see a stalker come out in terms of other stuff there's literally only probes that is all Seed has is probes right now. Um, Xenia, on the other hand, he's got eight Zerglings on the field and two Queens. Um, those Zerglings, only holding one Watchtower. I'm surprised he hasn't gone to take that other one, but he's got great positioning. He's got Zerglings at every ramp entrance. He's The reason he's got these is just to make sure there is no pylons coming down anywhere. Because that would indicate a warp in, and that would be bad times. But there's not going to be any pylons because there's a Stargate. And you know what's awesome about Stargates? They make skill rays, also known as void rays. But void rays are a pain. Uh, the other interesting thing is obviously Mass Phoenix. That is a nightmare for Zerg players to try and deal with. And it may not do huge amounts of damage or win you the game, but 
it can pick off quite a few drones, queens, that sort of thing, and it just annoys the hell out of you. Um, but no, we will see Seed going for the void weight option. He's also getting plus one ground weapon attack out. Um, meanwhile, well, Zeno, he's got his three bases up. He is droning. He's also getting his Roach one up, and hopefully he's going to do the standard timing of Roach one and Evolution Chamber. Evolution Chamber. Zeno, get your Evolution Chamber. Um, Okay, Xenio, he can't actually hear me because this game was played quite a long time ago. But if he could, he'd be making that Evo Chamber because otherwise this Voidway is going to make him sad face. And Seed, I love this going Voidway with Phoenix following up. The Voidway has been spotted though by this Overlord. So it's a free Overlord for Seed, which is good, but should trigger a Evolution Chamber for Spores. Um, or at least more Queens. The Lair coming down now, that's a fairly standard timing. The third and fourth gas coming out there for Xenio. Xenio is now supply block though, which is super, super irritating. There goes the Evolution Chamber, finally. Um, the reason that Evo Chamber needs to be out is for the Spores, because with the Phoenix there as well, obviously a Queen isn't going to be very cost effective. It will lose. Um, one Queen will lose. Two Queens can just hold it. But here we go, a Spine coming down. That can't attack up, which is always a nightmare. But with three Queens, that Void Weight is going to be forced back. And... Um, really just a couple more phoenix coming in and again that's going to be a pain more phoenix just being queued up three more gateways so that'll take him to four gates and a robo that's really a nice all-rounded opening from seed he's going to be a great spot there goes the spore callers down that is essential um one at each base um the lair nearly finished up Quite a few injects missed though because the queens have been pulled. And here we will see the voidways coming in. There's the spore down though. Um, again, if the spore is focused, he could go down. But again, see that he's got a couple of drone kills. I mean, if you take a look there, he's killed four drones. Um, that's just irritating as well. He's forced, again, three spores. So that's the equivalent of three drones. So essentially, he's quite a lot. He's getting his own third base up as well because those Phoenix and Voidway give such great map control. The Overseer, Observer rather, is coming out for Seed and really he's just being a pain. He's going to get another Overlord and that Supply Block Xenia again and just picking up Overlords is a nightmare. And I mean the real big tell of why I like this opening is look at that. No resources lost for Seed. Nothing. Zilch, zero, None compared to 775 for Xenio. So you can't get more effective than no losses in terms of being cost effective. These Zerglings will get spotted by the Phoenix because the Phoenix obviously give great map awareness as well. And I mean, there's enough armor here. There's a lot of sentries, there's zealots, everything's fine. The zealots are, of course, plus one. So that means they two shot the Zerglings because no upgrades are out yet for Xenio. He has got plus one carapace on the way. Oh, I do apologize. A plus one melee on the way. Get it right. This third base is just getting consistently beaten up and drones are getting taken out. Some drones will get picked off here, but the spore's in a good place. And two more overlords. And oh my god, all the overlords are clumped up together. That is like a feeding frenzy for Phoenix. And that is just horrible, horrible for Xenio there. But the Phoenix aren't taking advantage of it, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't know why C didn't just go straight for those overlords. Yes, they're pulling back. And here comes the Queens. And really, this is a good response. And we will see Xenio. He's got the Spire up, so he's getting out 11 Mutas. And that's going to put an end to that airplay. He's also getting out a fourth base of his own. And C, he's happy on three bases. He's in a good spot. He is getting some Immortals out, but... To be honest, he's going to be in a tough spot because there isn't a huge amount of Stalkers and there is about to be a huge amount of Mutalisks. Plus one coming out, Flyer Attack coming out for those Muters. And what are the Queen? How many Queens has he actually got? He's got six Queens, so two Queens per base. Um, that's always good. His Creep spread, though, because of that, could be better. Um, come on, Xenio, spread your Creep. Anyway, um, what have we got going down? We've got the third, fifth and sixth gas at the third for seed he's just in a nice spot and these muters are going to come in and wreak havoc havoc rather um where are the stalkers where have they gone to they pulled back the phoenix obviously they're going to do a nice job with the muters it's not going to be too easy but again it's a couple of really really happy probe kills and that corruptor is out there to help deal with the phoenix because corruptors are insanely good against phoenix because they're armored not light um we will see xenio he's going to go and take down a fifth base there so that is exactly what he wants to be doing um, really what's coming out for Seed well Seed is just having to micro so intensely with those Phoenix to avoid them going down but we will see a couple more probes get taken out um, 
Again, that one lone Phoenix trying to do some damage. Get some free hits. We'll go down, but the Stalker numbers are getting up a lot higher. Blink is on the way. Plus two weapon attack. Ground weapon attack coming out for Seed. He's also got the Templar Archives. Obviously, Storm is amazingly good against Muters um, because they clump up and clumped up. Muters die so quick to Storm. Meanwhile, double upgrades now on the way. Plus two melee attack and plus one carapace for Xenio. He's also getting the Overlord Speed. Plus one air attack is about to come out, so... Xeno really hinting that he's going to be going for Broodlord's late game. And, I mean, good cannon placement here. Um, really, Seed, he's just in a great spot. That cannon just surviving 14 HP, and that's just more unfortunate than anything for Xenio. Um, again, this is just... It's all going well, but Seed is being forced to play really defensively. And if we take a look at the work kill count, well, still in Seed's advantage. 13 to 5. Baning speed coming out here as well for Xenio. So Xenio is also getting his infestation bit, which means he can get Hive and also Infestors, which are awesome against Blink Stalkers. If we take a look at the work down, 96 to 79. So Xenio, he likes workers. And those Phoenix, a bit of a misclick there, going for a big engagement on the Muters, but quite a few go down. And the Voidway goes down as well. But great Blink play by those Stalkers and Seed there. He's going to be able to pick off. Um, Overseer as well, which is a nightmare, and he's also going to get the Corrupter, which again is not a fun time. But look at that train of Banes. Um, Baning trains are the worst kind of trains. If they derail, they explode. And I mean, C can be as much of a cool guy as he wants, but he doesn't. Whether he looks at the explosions or not, he's going to lose a lot of units. Um, he is trying to take up his own fourth base, but again, currently this is a five base Zerg against a three base Protoss. And Xenio has got all of the workers he needs. What his response is, well, he's getting up Hive. He's got his infestation pit. Pathogen glances on the way. He's forced to cancel the fourth. And essentially, once that storm comes out, those muters are going to be a bit easier to deal with. The Archon as well does splash against air. So, again, the Archon will help massively. But the big thing I would say is, well... Um, what Xenio needs to do is he needs to use some of these drones as spines and spores, which is as he's doing. Um, basically, you build a spine wall. It's Infestor Broodlord Spine is the actual build. Not Infestor Broodlord, as a lot of people try to go. You need the spines for the defense. And again, a cancel force, but the cancel didn't go off on the Nexus, so that's 400 minerals lost there for seed. Good little win. And those mutants are just going crazy, but there goes the Money Storm and just forces back this push. The force fields were perfect. And again, seed trying to take up his fourth base, but the longer this goes on, the worse it is. Look at the income. Look at how much high Xenio's gas income is. He's getting those seven infestors out. He's just finished up his hive, so he can get that greater spire any second. Now he's got plus two carapace. There goes the greater spire. Plus three ground attack coming out for Xenio, and those banings are coming in. The mineral line, the mineral line is going to go down, but not before a big storm, and the probes, they're clumping up, they're clumping up the probes. Oh my god, look at those baning hits. They're huge, but big money storm, but they do manage to connect still. So, Really, Xeno just killed a huge amount, about 20 workers on top of the five he killed earlier with the muters, and that is not good. If we look at the worker count now, 58 to 85. So, literally, the numbers have reversed there, um, and this fifth base of Xenio is under pressure, though, from Seed, and really, this is what Seed needs to do. He needs to take out these bases and as cost-effectively as possible, but we will see these muters are harassing the hell, but look at how many cannons there are over here. There's just so many cannons. Those stalkers are now starting to pull back, and that is exactly what Seed needs to do. Don't be greedy. Deal with these muters, those high templars coming in. They've got enough energy for a storm. A great blink forward there by Seed to pick off a couple more muters, but that greater spire is going to finish up imminently. Um, about 15 seconds left when I gave it a look. The plus three melee attack for Zerg on the way. Plus two Carapace for ground units, so those Broodlings are going to be crazy. Plus one air attack is done as well, so Broodlords in general are going to be on the money. And eight are in production, but of course Xenio is now back on four bases, so he's going to be equal bases with the Protoss player. He did have that economic advantage. Great fungal growth, and if he changes fungals, those Stalkers, that is just going to be the worst, most annoying thing in the world. But no, here we go. Big engagement, a good surround. The Force Fields are on the money, though, and the Broodlords aren't yet out. The Broodlords are at the back of the third base, though, so all Xenio has to do is delay this push as long as he can. And really, that's going to be a nightmare. The second the Seed sees those Broodlords, he's going to sad face and will be forced to pull back. But again, that's literally only only buying seed time now. Sorry, my headset just started full. And we've got Big Zerg and counter attack coming in here, but there's just so many cannons. Um, that is a lot of cannons, but of course, those mass upgraded Zergings are doing insanely well. 
and two big storms go off. The Archon getting morphed in. All the Zerglings get to take him down. Meanwhile, we will see Seed. He's pushing in with these Stalkers. And to be honest, this fourth base of Xenio could be under threat. But here comes the Broodlord Infestor army. And I mean, there's some money fungals. The sentries go down. But a great forward blink. It does mean the Stalkers get underneath. But frankly, just. I, well, no, actually, it's looking like the target firing of those Broodlords is being hugely effective, and Xenio is losing so many. The Infestors now getting picked off one by one. Obviously, you don't want to lose the Infestors. They're so gas-intensive. A mothership on the way out for Seed behind this as well, because why the hell not? And all of the Broodlords are cleaned up by Seed. That is amazing, amazing play. Now, we will see here a couple of Zerglings did manage to get into the fourth of Seed, but they get cleaned up pretty damn quick. Now, luckily for Xenio, he did manage to keep his fourth base. He's getting his fifth base up, well, re-up again now, but he's lost so many Broodlords. If we look at the loss tab, well... And that is definitely, definitely worse for Xenio by no uncertain terms. But obviously he had that better income for quite a long period of time. He's also got currently the tech... Well, tech advantage is pretty even. The upgrade advantage is definitely in Xenio's favour though. He's really just got to get plus three carapace and then those broodlings are 3-3. Three, three, and so are his zerglings. Does he have the adrenal glands upgrade? No. Get adrenal glands, Xenio. Do it, do it now. Anyway, we will see a big another push coming in here. But there goes the money storms. Just so many storms. Storms everywhere. All of the Zerglings were cleaned up, but the High Templar did go down. But it does force about the muters on insanely low health. And a great blink forward. All of those muters are gonna get cleaned up. One manages to get away. But to be honest, that was a big loss for Xenio. And Seed is really coming back into it. Two Broodlords in production. Um that is all that there is. And Oh no, there's not. There's quite a few more already up. So six Broodlords and another Corrupt coming out. The Infestor count isn't huge though. Only seven Infestors. But, I mean, look at Seed's army. Seed's army is actually pretty scary. He's got 3-1 upgrades. 3-3 three, three is about to finish up for Xenio. That plus 3 armor. And this sixth base of Xenio, well, that's not going to last long. Only just got up as well. So that was a short-term investment. And a money feedback on one of the Infestors. A huge storm goes off as well. Those Infestors, their health is really low. And, I mean, if some good feedbacks go off on them, that's going to be a nightmare for Xenio to deal with. Because, well, Infestors, they don't have a huge amount of health. And... Really, they've got a lot of energy, so that is never a good combination if you want to keep your Infestors alive and there's High Templar on the field. What else is going on? Well, we will see here Xenio, he's trying to take... No, Xenio is trying to deny Seed's fifth, but there's a cannon there and a Zeta that will deal with it nicely. And we will see that... Actually, no, Seed managed to snipe that off, so Seed is in a great spot right now. He's essentially put Xenio back onto one, two, and a tiny bit mining bases compared to his, well, two full mining bases so that's not a bad spot he's getting his own fifth base up as well those broodlords being a bit of a nightmare to deal with more in production two hatcheries coming out that hatchery being rebuilt there and there so Xenio desperately trying to get up to five base no six base um, but what's this it's gonna be a huge Zerg counter attack there's only zealots there and one cannon they will get cleaned up so quickly and more zealots are getting morphed in a Purely Zealot army, and that is the best thing to deal with it, but those upgrades for the Zerglings are 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three against 3-1 obviously comes out massively in favour of the Zerglings, and Seed is being forced to pull all of his army. He needs to keep this base up, otherwise he's going to be in huge problems. And Xeno just trying to snipe it down. Will he manage to get it? It's going to be close. It's going to be really close, but yes, he does. And that is a big, big loss there for Seed. And meanwhile, we will see that Xeno, he's got a lot of Broodlords. He's about to go and start assaulting that natural base, but he's got to be careful because he's got no backup for them. Only literally a handful of Infestors, a couple of Banelings. What is the total Infestor count? It is at 11 now. It's going to be 12 when that one pops. Both players are insanely even supply. They're both doing a great job of trying to take expansion and manage the other players' expansions. But Xenio, he is now up at 6 bases compared to... Four bases and six is greater than four. Um, the fifth base for Seed is trying to come out. He's leaving a lot more here now. He's got the storm ready for in case there's any more Zergling run bys, which have been so effective so far in this game at denying Seed's expansions. But the mothership is out, and that mothership has got enough money, enough energy for a vortex. Can have enough money for edit. Why do I keep saying money? Enough energy for two vortex, and um, that could be a bad time because there are archons out. So we could see a huge archon toilet of all of those. Broodlords. Is there any detection? Only just... No. No detection at all. Some huge feedbacks go off. Quite a few Infestors getting sniped off. They do burst. And those Banings all detonating on a single Archon. Now, 
I mean, again, as long as he stays under the mothership, he'll be fine. But look at those feedbacks. All of the investors getting picked off so terribly. But there is a lot of detection there. There goes the money vortex. And essentially, I don't quite know how much was trapped in there. But Seed, he's just throwing his army in. Quite a lot of other stuff getting caught in there as well. There goes the second vortex as well. So that is allowing Seed the time to pick off those overseers. And out comes a lot of broodlords. And just look at them disintegrate. And that is pretty much Xenio going to be out the game there. Because he's lost all of his broodlords. And that is not what he wants at all. And again, those Archons are getting a great round. Those broodlords vaporize. And I mean, look at the supply count. It says it all. Seed, he is dominating here. And all from that beautiful, beautiful double vortex. So, I mean... There is not much Zeno can do. He's got three more Broodlords in the way, but really he's got only three Infestors, no Broodlords. And that is never, never a good spot when you've got a Mothership, Archon, Stalker, Army against you, which is pretty much maxed out. And on the plus side, obviously, it does see Zeno is trying to counterattack best he can. But there's just too much stuff up here. And now CD is just marching down to the very bottom right to pick up that, well, base. And, well, there's the GG. So... C did an amazing job there. That was such a back and forth game. It was awesome. But the Archon Toilet just manages to tip it in C's favour. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the game, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my YouTube. Follow me on Twitter. Leave any comments, criticisms or compliments below the video. It would be awesome. I love feedback. And tune in again. Bye for now.